Watcher 7, a digital master of what may be the best UFO video of all time, was given to Richard Shaw by Dr. Roger Lear only a few months before he passed away. The video shows a spacecraft hovering over the Sea of Marmara in Kambergaz, Turkey, and was shot by videographer Yalsin Yalma in 2009. The video showed a ship with a viewing portal in front with what looked like two alien beings. It was then analyzed by the University of Istanbul and documented as an actual sighting. What we saw was absolutely mind-blowing because it was the front of uh, what appeared to be a disk and three portals. In each portal you could actually see beings and some of them was the, the typical black-eyed grays, but there were other beings that were there also. The master mini-DV tape was sent to Chile for analysis by Mario Valdez Santiago. Mario did a frame-by-frame -frame analysis and found what he believed to be a third alien being. What he did was he took and he did an analysis on the occupants. Since the images from the tape were fuzzy, he helped by sketching in the details in an overlay. The incredible detail evident in Mario's work was astonishing, but Richard wanted to see if he could find the third alien himself using professional compositing software. He decided to do a follow-up analysis based on the original digital copy that Roger had given him. Since there's so much fakery in the field of UFOs, on YouTube and everywhere else, Richard is now going to show us the steps he took using Adobe After Effects, a professional compositing program on Mac, to see what else might be hiding in the original video. First thing I did was to scale up the video to HD size, and then I needed to work on the brightening it up a little bit here. So I'm using the curves effect, which is, you can also find it in Photoshop, but this is on moving images. I wasn't really happy with what the curves filter would do. I used something else later, but right now I'm just trying to bring up the luminance. What I've tried to do here is bring up the brightness of it so that the stabilizer has something to lock onto. This is uh, After Effects stabilizer mode, and basically the little boxes around what looks like the, the left alien's head, which seemed to be an object that I was hoping the software could find and lock onto. So that's what I'm doing here. It only partially worked. You see how it jumped by, I didn't do that. The software couldn't, it lost lock. Well, there you can see the little alien's eyes there. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I went ahead and let it just do a little bit more, and as it's going through at a frame at a time here, I was seeing the other uh, alien heads and their eyes. I ended up putting a grid up on the screen and manually, a frame at a time, stabilizing it myself. If you look up into the right corner there, you can see the keyframes that uh, were drawn in as far as position, they're all popping in. And down uh, in the timeline there in the sequence window, you can see uh, how all these are lining up. When I zoom into it here, you can see uh, something in the dark space. That's what we're interested in, is looking into that dark space to the right of the two little alien gray heads that we've seen in other videos before of the same Combergas footage. There's something there. And it's moving around really fast. Uh, it just almost looks like static when you look at it in real time. It was only until I decided I would slow the frame down that I really got the results I wanted. And also, I started using just the normal brightness and contrast controls. That's what I was doing there in the palette on the left. I also took the saturation down because there were colors in there uh, of the ship. Uh, some of it could be NTSC artifacting because sometimes you get rainbow effects and other times you don't. Now you can kind of see there's, I mean, you have to look closely, but we're at right there where I've got the cursor going around, there's something there uh, moving what appears to be its head back and forth, rotating its head back and forth. And, you know, people, some people can see that and some people can't. I'm going to help by freezing it and blowing it up a little bigger and enhancing the brightness so you can see it. Now you can kind of see kind of a profile of the alien head. The reason that we have such a speed differential, in my opinion, is that we're actually seeing an actual example of time dilation. In other words, the difference in time domains from where Yeltsin, the cameraman, was recording with his camera on the beach 
to this craft hanging out over the sea, perhaps a mile away from him. And the craft was levitating for several hours over this one spot. And according to everything that we've learned, there's always missing time components when people are aboard a craft. And this may be the reason for it, that it is an illusion, but to us it looks like everything is moving 10 times the normal speed. The time dilation problem no doubt contributed to the blurry images and frames that had intraframe blurring. The camera was no match for what was going on inside the spaceship. To help you see the footage better, Richard time-stretched the video 600% in After Effects and then doubled it again in Final Cut Pro. What I'm going to do now is loop some of these passages so that you can see them backwards and forwards because seeing the motion will help you see the aliens. I put the arrows up there near the large eyes to help you kind of isolate them. There's also something else going on, but uh, here's the third alien's eyes coming up here. Here's the best shot I have of the third alien. You can see it turning its head and looking off to the side. Perhaps it's something next to him. The more I looked at this footage and examined it, the more that I began to believe that there was something else going on to the right of the three aliens. And it looks almost like a humanoid being dangling its feet out the front of the spacecraft. I would hesitate to speculate on what it might be. It's incredible that we can see anything, but I'm still amazed every time I watch this video. A while back, Paul Hellyer, the former Secretary of Defense of the Canadian government, stated openly, UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. Fast forward, and we have John Podesta, who was on part of Obama's cabinet, who mm -hmm. stated that he wished that he would have done more to um, allow the people of the United States to understand that the UFO phenomena is in fact real. In other words, he was trying to get disclosure to happen, which is just incredible. So we see that the information is sort of dribbling out, as it were. Daniel says that the Antichrist is going to be a powerful man, exceedingly powerful, superhuman, if you will, worshiping a God whom his fathers knew not. In other words, some kind of demigod and having supernatural power of some sort. Fausto Perez has the ability to call down UFOs. He plans and invites others to see these events so that there will be witnesses. This time, there was a crowd of onlookers with three good cameras that zoomed into something quite incredible over the skies of Sequoia Park in California. You want something to show up, you reach out to basically whatever is up there and you try to keep positive energy about it because that will attract a positive uh, entity to you. Because I've had people who tell me they'll do it at night while they're scared, and when they're scared they don't attract anything good. <laughs> it appears to be a glowing three-dimensional entity with a very humanoid shape. Real UFOs often emit brilliant light of a blue-white nature, and this one is no different. This particular sighting is similar to the Flying Men video clips given to watchers by Jaime Masson over Mexico. But this one is much clearer and more defined than anything we've seen in the past. The flying men phenomena is seen in many examples of ancient Peruvian art and is still being sold as souvenir items in Paracas. Apparently, sightings like Fausto discovered have been documented for centuries. But if these entities are bold enough to be coming out now, what might be next? <laughs>